Hello everyone, welcome to your partner in education, Agile Rank Mate. Today, in this episode of VT Workshop, we're going to be looking at some sample questions from Aptitude. Aptitude is one of the many subjects that uh, the VT examination is based on, and it's one of those subjects which requires a lot of practice. So this video is all about uh, providing practice for Aptitude questions. Uh, aptitude sample questions and we're going to be looking at the questions themselves and how to solve them effectively. So let's start off with our first question. In a certain code language DOME is written as 8943 and MEAL is written as 4321. What group of letters can be formed for the code 38249? Is it EOADM, MEOOA, EMDAO or EDAMO? So, how do we solve this question? Well, when it comes to coding and decoding, you'd always need to write the code along with the word it's representing. So, DOME is represented by 8943. And MEAL is represented by 4321. Now, if you look at the question, I mean, if you look at the two words and their codes, you see that 4 and 3 are present corresponding to the position of the letters M and E respectively. So M stands for 4, E st 4 stands for M, E stands for 3. Similarly, we can consider 8 as D, 9 as O, A as 2, and L as 1. So this is, well, in this kind of code, each letter is given a particular number. So now, we need to find out what group of letters can be formed for the code 38249. So 38249. Now 3 represents E. That means option B turns out to be incorrect because it starts with M. 8 is represented by D. That means option A and C are incorrect because they contain O and M respectively. So therefore, the only correct option is option D, E, D, A, M, O. 2 stands for A, 4 stands for M, 9 stands for O. So it turns out that option B, I mean option D, the last option, is the right option. So all we have to do is write the code along with the, le along with the word, then find out the relation between the code and the letter or the word, and then use that relation in order to find out the code for a particular word or a word or group of letters for the particular code. Next question. Find the missing number from the given response. So we have this particular diagram which represents 93, 27, 63 as well as 3 and the second diagram shows 79, 38, 37 as well as 4. Now in the third diagram the number at the bottom is missing we need to find out what number that is. But in order to find out what number that is, we need to find out the relation between the three, the four numbers in this particular diagram. Now, if you look at the top left corner, this particular circle always contains the highest number. And then the other two um, numbers that are connected to it at the trijunction would have to be added which is the logical conclusion here because 63 and 27 together would go for something less than 90. So if you if you add 63 and 27, 3 plus 7 gives you 10, 6 plus 2 plus 1 gives you 9. So we have 90 as the pro as the sum of 63 27. Now 90 minus 9, I mean 93 minus 90 gives you the number 3 and that's the number which is present at the bottom circle. So therefore the relation is add the second and third largest number in the particular trijunction and then subtract the sum from the largest number and from there you will get the number on the bottom. Now let's test this out with the second figure. 
So we have 79, 38, and 37. Let's add 38 and 37. That gives you 75. All right, so 79 minus 75 gives you 4, which is the number at the bottom. So now that we know that this relation is correct, we're going to use this relation to find the missing number from the third figure. So over here we have 42 and 16 as the second and third largest numbers at the trijunction. So therefore 42 plus 16 would give you 58. The largest number is 67. When we subtract 58 from it, we get 9. So therefore option D9 is the right option. Options C, B, and A are incorrect because if the missing number is 5, 6, or 8, then these two number, then the top, the number, the largest number would be different. So therefore, option D, the last option, turns out to be the right option again. Next question. Which of the following correctly represents the relationship between illiterates, poor people, and unemployed? Now, uh, we have Venn diagrams representing the three. Now, it's important to note that illiterates are a separate group. Poor people are a separate group. And unemployed, also a separate group. The These three words represent different um, criteria. Illiterates criteria is education, poor people's criteria is money, and unemployed criteria is if you're holding a job or not. So um, option A would turn out to be incorrect because, you know, it shows uh, that one of the two of these are completely related, which is not. Now, if you look at uh, a population, you would notice that there are poor people who are illiterates and unemployed. And that sort of interaction is only provided by option B. So therefore, option B turns out to be the right option. Option D is incorrect because uh, it says that only two of these can be related together. All three of them cannot be related to a group of people. And option C says all three of these, uh, you know, Relation, all three of these are unrelated. That's why they're separated. That is also incorrect. So according to option B, there are illiterates who are poor people, there are illiterates who are unemployed, and there are Ill illiterates who are poor and unemployed. And there are also illiterates who are neither poor nor un unemployed. That's how the correct relation should work because, again, there are rich illiterates, there are rich unemployed, there are poor people who are literate and employed, so therefore, option B turns out to be the right option. Next question. Sushma walks 20, km, I mean 20 meters towards north. Then she turns right and walks 30 meters. Now she turns right and walks 35 meters. Then she turns left and walks 15 meters. She turns left again and moves another 15 meters. And finally, she turns left and walks 15 meters. We need to find out in which direction and how far is she from her original position. Is it 15 meters east, 30 meters east, 15 meters west, or 45 meters west? So before moving on, we will draw the cardinal directions first for direction tests. So north, south, west, and east. Now, let's consider the initial position as A. Now from here, the person walked 20 meters towards north. So let's take this position as B. And the distance between A and B to be 20 meters. Now at B, she turns right and walks 30 meters. So the new, her new position is now C. And the distance she traveled between B and C is 30 meters. She turns right again and walks 35 meters. So now she reaches a point D, which is 35 meters away from C. From here onwards, she's turning left. So she moves this way. And now she walks 15 meters. So, at, so the distance between D and E is 15 meters. 
She turns left again and walks another 15 meters. So from E to F, she walks 15 meters. Finally, she turns left and walks 15 meters towards the point G. So basically, D, E, F, G is a square of side 15 meters. Now, we need to find out the distance between A, G and the direction of G from A. Now, we have the rectangle A, B, C, G. Now, um, a rectangle is basically a parallelogram, so parallel sides of a rectangle or a parallelogram are equal. So therefore, um, the distances AB and CG are both 20 meters. And similarly, the distances BC and AG are equal to 30 meters. So therefore, we now know the distance between A and G, that's 30 meters. Now A is to the right of G and, the, and to the right is represented by east. So therefore, 30 meters east turns out to be the right option. So therefore, option B is the correct option. Option A, 15 meters east is incorrect because, you know, that would be somewhere in the middle and it would not reach G. Option C, 15 meters west, would mean to the left. 45 meters west also means to the left. But here we find G is to the right. So both C and D are incorrect. The final answer for this question is option B, 30 meters east. Now let's look at the final question for the day. In a classroom, there are five rows and five children, A, B, C, D, and E. They are seated one behind the other in five separate rows as follows. A is sitting behind C, in front, but in front of B. Um, C is sitting behind E, and D is sitting in front of E. Now we need to find out the order in which they are sitting from the first row to the last. Is it D, E, C, A, B, B, A, C, E, D, A, B, C, a, C, B, D, E, or A, B, E, D, C. So, how do we solve this question? Well, let's look at the two clues given. The first clue is A sits behind C, but it's present in front of B. So this is what the first clue says. The second clue says C is sitting behind E, and D is sitting in front of E. So since in both of these clues we have the letter C is common, we can now join them together to get the actual order, which turns out to be option A, D, E, C, A, B. If you use the other options, then you can see that um, the order is being uh, turned out as incorrect because because in option B, B is set to be in front of A, but that's not true. In option C, it says B is sitting behind C, but that's incorrect. And in option D, you can see that A and B are nowhere near C. So therefore, options B, C, and D are incorrect. The right answer is option A. The order in which uh, five children A, B, C, D, E are sitting in five rows is D, E, C, A, and B. So that concludes this episode of Viti Workshop. We hope you found this episode interesting. For more of our useful and interesting content, don't forget to subscribe to Agile Rank Mate, your partner in education. If you want to get more questions on aptitude or more Viti questions or more questions on other competitive exams, then please don't forget to hit the notifications icon present below the video. So until the next webisode, take care, stay alert, bye-bye for now.